uh, everyone to join. So hello everyone. This is the MBA Bytes, a bite-sized lecture from ESMT Berlin. Um, people are trickling in still over the next couple of minutes, but I will already introduce um, myself. So my name is Catherine. I am one of the admissions managers for the MBA programs, especially the full-time MBA and the global online MBA. And with me, I have one of our uh, very uh, revered lecturers, um, who I will introduce just in a second. But let me first go through uh, what will be happening uh, over the next 30 minutes or so. So. When we look at what is coming up. Um, you will hear from our professor, Mihao. Um, after his very interesting uh, thoughts and little exercises, um, I will be talking more about ESMT and our MBA programs. And at the end, there will be a little bit of time for Q&A. Plus, please, but please feel free to pop your questions all throughout into the Q&A section. Um, and in the background, we will try to already answer a few of them and hopefully at the end answer anything that might be interesting for everyone. So um, it would be great if you could keep your questions as broad as possible. There will always be the chance to email um, the admissions team with anything more closely aligned to your own profile um, and they will always be uh, glad to get back to you. So to kick off, I want to introduce Mihao. He is an associate professor for economics with tenure here at ESMT. He, his research interest lies in the areas of applied economics, um, industrial organization, uh, competition policy and strategy. Apart from teaching and uh, his academic research, he has also served ESMT as director of research for three years. And he is, of course, also the faculty lead for the ESMT full-time MBA. And with that, I want to hand over to him to take it away. All right, perfect. Uh, Catherine, thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, welcome everyone to this uh, webinar. I can't see you on my screen, but I assume that you're out there. And, you know, I planned a little bit of interaction with you guys, you know, as we go along. So let's see how, how this is going to how this is going to work. OK, so uh, let me first share my screen. Um, right. So um, I'll just go over here. Wait a second. Okay, share my screen. All right, you should be able to see it. Now, it's basically, um, you know, a title slide for a session which I used uh, not long a time ago, uh, two or three months ago for our executive MBA, you know, program. And the session was on, you know, game theory and perfect competition. So basically what I want to do in the, you know, coming 10, 15, 20 minutes, is to give you a little bit of a, you know, in-class experience as to, you know, how we at the SMT, we instruct us teach, you know, various courses, various topics. Um, and to that end, I'm going to use an example, you know, some of my teaching, uh, as you can, as you can see here. Um, so let's, let's, you know, uh, jump into it. So uh, basically to give you a little bit of a, of a background, you know, there are multiple courses when you go through the uh, MBA program, you know, they are so-called foundational uh, uh, courses such as, you know, economics, um, decision-making and the like, um, which basically give you some sort of an abroad overview of uh, important ways of thinking about, about, about business. So economics is, as I said, one of them, it kind of creates insight that you take later on to courses such as marketing, you know, strategy, um, and and similar, okay. And so this particular, you know, uh, course uh, basically talks about you know different modes of 
different levels of competition. So we think of, you know, competition can be, you know, super intense in some type of markets. It can be much more relaxed in, in other type of markets. Uh, okay. And then there will be the, uh, some markets which are in between where the competition is somewhat intense, okay, but not as high as in, in perfect competitive world. Um, and in those kind of markets, there's this additional kind of elements of strategic interaction between players. So think about, you know, Apple basically uh, releasing new version of iPhone and Samsung around the same time, you know, thinks about positioning, you know, their uh, best selling, you know, handset, Galaxy or whatever that might be. Okay. And those two players, they closely watch one another and trying to see their actions and kind of in some optimal way respond to that. So this is more or less what, you know, this session is tapping into. Um, now, you know, my colleagues and I, we do teach in a sort of a, using very wide uh, set of, you know, frameworks and approaches. Many of us would use um, case studies, which basically describe in a certain situation, such as business situation, and you jump into like a very realistic scenario from the get go. Uh, I take a different approach. I take more like a theory driven approach when I take, you know, some theoretical frameworks and try to show what we can learn out of that, how we can strengthen our way to thinking about, you know, the business competition strategy uh, and the firm, okay? So, so this is, you know, the session on uh, imperfect competition, where, again, as I said, we are somewhere in between this very competitive market and not so competitive markets. Um, in this session, uh, we are basically using, you know, game theory, that's our theoretical backdrop, and there's, you know, some concepts and that I explain typically uh, in the lecture. I'm not going to, to do it now for the sake of time. Uh, instead of that, I'm going to right away jump into a little game, uh, which I, you know, played with the students to basically get them hooked on, on those uh, strategic situations and think deeply, uh, trying to think deeply through um, um, consequences. So imagine, and the following situation, I'm going to play this game with you now. So, you know, uh, be ready, uh, be concentrated, be focused, because you'll be you know, asked to, to do something in a second. Um, so imagine the situation that two prisoners held in separate cells, the district attorney knows that they are guilty, okay, but needs a confession, so there's no evidence yet. And then the strategic situation looks as follows. If only one of those you know, criminals confesses, that person gets a light sentence. All the blame goes on, on the other guy. If neither of them confess, they can be only charged on the minor, uh, convicted on the minor charges, right? There's no evidence. If both confess, however, the confession is worthless in, you know, in the sense that it canceled out, such that both basically face a fairly high penalty. You could, um, show the situation in the following matrix, okay, where you have, you know, two players, there's player A and player B. Um, they are, you know, they have two actions each. You can either confess or not confess, okay? Uh, the black outcome measured in years of prisons, this is something you read in the middle, you know, of the matrix, is basically the sentence of prisoner A. The red numbers, that's the sentence of, of prisoner B, okay? And you basically have to make up your mind and, and decide, okay? So the question is basically, what do you do in such a situation? So let's, you know, play this game together. You know, imagine that you are playing against, you know, me or uh, some other participant, you know, of this webinar. And you have to, you know, make up your mind um, and basically decide. You either confess or you don't confess, okay? Um, I've basically prepared, prepared a little, you know, mentee um, um, page for that. So we just enter the code 69725475 um, and you can enter your choice. So this is, you know, how the mentee is going to look like. Okay, so I'm going to wait, you know, a few minutes for you to, you know, move in and, and, and sort of enter your decisions. And before that happens, I'm just bringing back you know, the, um, the slide, which shows, you know, the consequences, uh, the outcomes. So have a look, you know, think about it for, you know, you have a minute or so, and then let's discuss, you know, how to, 
uh, how you could think about what's going on in this game. Okay, and because I don't really know how many people, you know, out there are, you know, listening to this webinar, I'm really sort of curious to see, you know, the outcome, you know, how many votes are there are going to be, you know, turning in. I mean, let's, let's see. Very exciting moment. Okay, I hope you are ready. I hope you had you know, enough time to type that in on your, on your phone or your computer, whatever else uh, you, you have in, in front of you. So let me you know, check whether we can see any, I think there are 14 responses. Okay, so that's, that's quite good. Um, I'm not sure how many participants there are. So maybe you know, let's wait for just a little bit more. 14 is already quite good, 15. Okay, if you need to have a look at the table, you know, that's the table. Again. All right. And then we go back to the outcome. We have 15 votes. So let's see, you know, how you think about. All right, we have a quite a nice split. Six of you would like to confess, nine of you do not want to confess, okay? Um, that's a great outcome. It's actually quite often the case that in the MBA classrooms, you're going to have, you know, this, this kind of split is very often equal. Sometimes, you know, more heavily leans on kind of not confessing as in, as in this group. So, you know, in that sense, you are not very different from MBAs. Uh, maybe that's, you know, something to, to think about. Um, okay, so now I would sort of open, you know, the floor for discussing this. So basically, I want to tease out in the classroom and maybe now with you to some extent, what was on your mind when you decided to confess or not to confess, okay? So if you could kind of either raise your hand, but I don't really sort of see the, the hands being raised. Um, so either raise your hand such that, you know, we can unmute you if you would like to tell us why you chose, you know, one or the other, or write your, um, you know, point, your, your uh, point of discussion in the, in the chat uh, field. Um, and let's, let's try to, you know, get this discussion going to some extent if possible. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, Catherine, can you help me? I mean, do you see any raised hands? Uh, because I, I really don't. Or perhaps, you know, you can see, you know, some of the, some, you know, uh, ideas, uh, comments, you know, being written in the, uh, in the chat that you could read. Uh, so far, I have not seen a comment, but um, Chair, he had his hand up, so. Okay, so go ahead. I will allow you to talk. <clears throat> Hi, Sher sure here. Um, Hi there. Um, so I did put my comment in the chat box at the moment, but I said I sort of considered the probability of like what my chances would be of walking away with a lower sentence. And if we both confessed, we would obviously get a two year sentence each. But um, if I confessed, there was also a higher chance of me getting a lower sentence than, you know, the other person not confessing. So there's sort of like a three over four chance that prisoner B wouldn't confess, um, which would give me sort of uh, a benefit in terms of lowering my, um, lowering my chance of going, of, of lowering my sentence, because in each case, there's obviously a sentence regardless. Mm -hmm. So yeah. did you confess or not at the end of the day? I confessed. I confessed. You confessed. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Th thanks so much, you know, for your, for your contribution. Um, for the sake of time, I mean, unfortunately, we can't sort of, you know, get this discussion going. This is something that I would sort of do in the class. 
trying to tease out because there are many different kind of thoughts that you might be, you know, having in your mind. So let me just, you know, present, you know, some of the ideas and maybe, you know, some of them will resonate with what you've been thinking when, when deciding what to do in this game. Um, so, um, so indeed, you know, the idea to confess um, is not a, a bad idea because if you think about this game, so let me you now show you on this screen. If you think about this game, like, you know, line by line, or column by column, okay? So consider you are, you know, the prisoner B and you're trying to respond in best possible way. So you are A and trying to respond in best possible way to what the B is doing, okay? So you might want to think about this problem in the following way. So what, suppose that B wants to confess, okay? So we are kind of in this column. If B wants to confess, my choice is between eight years of prison and 10 years of prison. If I do confess, I minimize my sentence. So that's what we've you know, created um, in, in, in a second. Okay, so I might want to respond by confessing if B does confess. Now, how does the situation change if we think about the B will not confess? Well, then again, you are sort of comparing the black numbers in this kind of right column when B does not confess. And you see that you're comparing two against one. And again, you know, choosing one, so choosing to confess means one years of prison rather than two, that kind of uh, minimizes your sentence again. So you see that either way, whatever B does, your best response is always to confess, okay? So that's one way of, you know, thinking about this problem. Um, and not, but you know, if you uh, realize that this is a symmetric game, so A and B are in exact same situation, then you are going to end up both confessing and both having eight years of prison. Well, that might be rational from the viewpoint of you know best responding to what what the other you know player, the other business in other setups will do, but that obviously does not minimize the overall. Um, payoff, okay? So you see that if both keep silent, so don't confess, don't confess, okay? If that kind of actions are chosen, then we end up in the right lower quadrant when, you know, uh, you know both of the prisoners spent only two years of prison. So that's obviously better than spending eight, okay? So the question is, why can't we sort of, you know, somehow, you know, get into this better uh, to this better outcome too, too. And this, you know, simple answer is that this is not individually rational. If you think about, you know, this little matrix as the everything that counts in this strategic situation, okay? So, you know, this game shows, um, among other things, you know, the tra tragedy of the commons, okay? That basically by, you know, behaving opportunistically, you're basically making things worse for everyone, you know, involved. And um, now there might be sort of other uh, ideas in your, in your mind if you kind of think about this game seriously as, you know, depicting criminals, then immediately you might think, wait a second, but what happens next, right? What happens if I go out of jail um, and, you know, uh, I've been, you know, just, uh, uh, I've been just, you know, confessed or spilled the beans on my, on my colleague. That does not make me sort of very likable in, you know, the, uh, the, the criminal sphere. So I might face punishment. If I face punishment later on, I might actually be incentivized not to confess in the first place. Okay. So that's another way of, you know, looking at this game. If you think about it a little bit broader in terms of long-term consequences, what happens afterwards, then basically... Uh, you might end up with a different outcome than this confess, confess, eight, eight that we've discovered, you know, a, a minute ago. So that's basically, you know, uh, so this little game is a, like a working horse, you know, for us in this session to think about the so-called oligopolistic market. So the markets where there is only kind of few businesses that compete with one another and closely watch each other's actions in order to improve. Um, um, you know, the, uh, the profitability, okay? Um, this game can, however, be used to many other life situations. So that's kind of the beauty of theory that it shows us the way of thinking, the logic that we can apply to many different 
uh, situations, both in business, but also outside of the business world. Um, so this session would then sort of move on. I would dig deeper into those oligopolistic markets, trying to see what are the specific uh, characteristics of those markets, which would tilt the competition toward, you know, or either the more harsher kind of outcome when firms really sort of compete with one another and are more like this 8-8 type of outcomes, and which features are going to move the competition into softer areas where actually the firms choose to go like 2-2, okay? So that would be, that would, you know, take, however, typically 80, 90 minutes, so, or 80 minutes, so that would be like a standard length of our, you know, uh, teaching session. Obviously, we don't have, you know, that much time today. So I guess at this point, uh, it's a good, good time to stop. Um, I hope that I could, you know, awake your interest a little bit in this kind of MBA style, you know, teaching and thinking about, you know, business problems. And uh, I would like to thank you for your attention and give the floor back to Catherine. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mihao. That was very insightful and bend our minds, I think. So thank you very much for giving an insight. Um, Mihao will stay on the call. So if there's any questions later on, he is still available. So, But I will just continue for now with um, talking a little bit about our MBA profiles. So first of all, who is ESMT actually? ESMT Berlin is um, was founded by 25 leading um, uh, global companies. You can see all their, um, their logos there. These are the founding companies um, of the school. Um, we have celebrated our 20th birthday, um, so still relatively young for as far as um, business schools go. Um, but we have actually managed to be triple crown accredited already. Um, so you know that you will get the best education uh, when you study, when you decide for one of our programs. Uh, we offer a total of four different MBA programs. And you can see we have a very international cohort throughout all of them. Um, over 98 countries are represented within the student body, um, over 19 different countries within the faculty body, um, with lots of different ventures started by our students as well as alumni, and um, a steadily growing alumni network as well. So to just give you a very brief overview of um, our different MBA programs, uh, just in the interest of time. So you can see all four of them listed. We have the full-time MBA and three different part-time MBA programs with different degrees of how much time you would spend on campus and who actually this program really targets. So to just dig a little bit deeper into the full-time MBA. So it's a 15 month program. It's full-time on campus in person. Um, Miha would be your faculty lead. And um, on average, the students that decide for that kind of program have an average uh, experience, years of experience of about six years. So, so that's kind of like the, the type of people you would be studying with. Um, you see the tuition fees there for the whole 15 month program uh, with different scholarships available and start date would always be um, January of every year. So we just had our class started a couple of weeks now. Everyone's excited and uh, wide eyed bushy tailed uh, came to our campus now. Um, there is lots of different options for you to do, for example, an internship during the program, also to um, specialize and personalize your program with different electives you can choose and different tracks you can choose. Um, so really worth looking into if you're looking to change your job, change your industry, or even change country in terms of your career. The next uh, MBA that you see there, the part-time MBA, is a 24-month MBA, which allows you to keep working. So these this program is especially if you're interested in um, infusing your business knowledge and, and improving your business knowledge with the innovative thinking. Um, so people that study that are usually have an average uh, work experience of about seven years. Um, it is 75% studied online and 25% is here on campus. So about every uh, second month you would travel to campus. You'll be here two and a half days from Thursday to Saturday. And so you have that networking opportunity while you're here, as well as having the flexibility of studying online while you keep working. 
start date would always be in September. Next one is the most flexible of the programs that we offer. That is the Global Online MBA. And so that also allows you to keep on working, keep on having your commitments and dedicating your time to whatever is going on in your life, as well as uh, upgrading your business knowledge with basically a general management MBA. Um, it's 100% online, but the good thing is that it also offers you in-person elective options, which are either the Berlin Experience Week or the Global Experience Week. And that's always a really good chance for the students to come together, to see each other face to face. Um, it's always a very a joyous moment when people come onto campus in July and uh, see the campus, also discover Berlin, discover the entrepreneurial economic um, landscape of Berlin and um, also get to know each other on this uh, personal level. But that, in saying that, um, even though it is 100% online, really strong bonds um, form in even these cohorts because we know how important networking is within an MBA and that you learn just as much from your classmates as it is that you learn from your curriculum. So um, lots of emphasis is always in all of the programs put on teamwork, working together, having this international outlook um, and keeping an open mind. Um, this program starts both in May and in September. And um, people tend to be a little bit older in this program that, that choose this program with about 11 years of experience. The executive MBA is tailored towards the um, people in the most senior leadership um, positions. So these people tend to have um, about 14 years of experience and it is all in person. And um, so it is a part-time program. So you come onto campus um, over 10 modules, which are, which are always a week long. Um, and so you really get to um, form yourself into that leader that you really want to be, that uh, future leader that knows about all the current uh, topics that are interesting for um, leaders of people, of organizations, of people that have their own business or even are already at that uh, CXO level. And when we go to the next slide, you can see what the, our career department um, has relation to the, the companies that our career department has relationship with and where you can uh, start your network from. So the career department actually um, puts on different opportunities all throughout all four programs where you can um, basically expand on your network, maybe get that job that you always wanted or you start putting your feelers out. So there is, for example, on the 1st and 2nd of February, we do have our uh, career fair coming on. And you can see all these different big names that um, basically um, have their um, um, have their touch points with us and with our students here on campus. So just to take note of the next deadlines coming up in terms of admissions, um, we do have um, in February quite a few deadlines coming up for your first round admissions deadlines. Um, so for full-time, for the executive MBA and the part-time MBA, um, there's these first deadlines coming up where you can save a little bit of, uh, of money on your tuition. And for the Global Online MBA, you um, have your deadline coming up just in a few days if you want to uh, reduce your tuition costs. But overall, the application deadline is not until April. So now we hope we have really uh, sparked some interest. Uh, so if you have any open questions now, if you want to hear more about the programs, if you want to talk to someone in admissions, feel free to drop the admissions team a line at admissions at esnt.org. There's our um, different links to connect with us as well and follow us uh, or give us a call. And uh, have a look if there is any um, any questions now left unanswered? Um, so just to answer that question about the Global Online MBA, it's about 15 hours of work commitment or study commitment really um, to do well in the Global Online MBA as well as also in the part-time MBA. So you need to kind of keep in mind um, 15 hours per week on top of, of course, your full-time job or whatever that might be. So thank you everyone very much for uh, coming on to this webinar. Thank you again, Michal, 
for your very insightful session. Um, and we hope to hear from everyone and have a good evening, everyone. Bye-bye. Okay, thank you. Take care.